So you want to be a quantum computer expert. I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is Dr. Chris Ferry, author and associate professor at the Center for Quantum Software and Information at the University of Technology in Sydney. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for having me. Give us a quick summary of your professional background, will you? So I'm an associate professor at the Center for Quantum Software and Information, and that's in the University of Technology, Sydney. And a, a professor in, in Australia does the same thing as a professor everywhere else in the world. And we teach um, in lecture theaters and we do research and we supervise graduate students. And before that, I was a postdoctoral researcher in various places around the world, including um, Sydney and at the University of New Mexico uh, and also at the University of Waterloo. So I've been traveling a little bit around the world and landed up at my uh, final destination. <laughs> so far. So, yeah, so far. <laughs> young people entering the workforce in this third decade of the 21st century are already digital natives. They've grown up with classical computing and understand programs and apps and embrace a world connected by computer-based networks. Quantum computing is, is growing and maturing mm -hmm. along with them. So for those who wish to enter the world of quantum computing, what concepts will they find familiar and what concepts will they have to learn from scratch? So I think if you want to utilize quantum technology, we're going to have to wait a while. So if, if, if you're someone that's used to like developing software and you're thinking, well, maybe I'll have to use quantum computers to develop software. Well, that won't happen for several years. And that, that point, much of the difficulties in the, like the, the, the science behind it will be abstracted in the same way that people interact with building apps now, where you don't need to know that there's a transistor in the computer and how that works now. And you won't need to understand quantum concepts in the future if you're going to utilize quantum computers to achieve some uh, task that is you know, for, for, for everyday purposes. If you wanna be involved in quantum technology and help build this technology, then you need a little bit more expertise. And, and that typically Will, at the moment, anyway, it, it's such a new and emerging field that that typically requires at least a graduate level degree. Um, to be involved in a company that's developing quantum technology, of course, it's a large company. And so most of their employees wouldn't be experts in quantum computing. I mean, they need front end developers, they need back end developers, they need marketing people, they need designers. Um, so you can go and work for a quantum startup company today with any skill set that you have because they need those skills. If you want to be one of the engineers behind the scenes, then you, you need to have a, a degree in, in quantum computing. So to learn programming for quantum, you won't necessarily need an extensive math or physics background as a prerequisite. So what would you need? Well, I think a, a standard software engineering degree would, would be well suited to also programming a, a quantum computer. I mean, at the moment, it's, it has its own sort of language, but if you are, are a software engineer, then, then you know how to you know, translate different programming languages and you understand the higher level concepts and just learning the new syntax for a new language w shouldn't be difficult. Um, so I think uh, just a standard sort of software engineering um, you know, type mindset or skill set would suit you well for for programming a quantum computer even today what quantum computing career fields are in the greatest need for new talent over maybe the next few years and you know you mentioned education to some extent but let's talk more about that but more importantly what kind of experience uh will best position uh, you for any of those careers well, I, when I talk to young people like high school students, um, I always t tell them a, a, more, a more general piece of advice, which is study mathematics. Because, you know, maybe you like quantum computing now, but you might not in five years when you're done your, your studies or your degree. And if you have a background in mathematics, then it really you can do anything. Um, you know, it's a, it's a kind of general skill set that's behind, you know, all, all all fields. I mean, even if you don't, even if you, 
you don't really it doesn't seem that way um you know it, because when when you're in high school or, or or if you if you haven't thought about mathematics for a long time then you might think of it as just like numbers and counting and figuring out ways to multiply big numbers but it's really um just thinking abstractly and solving problems and that's what you know at higher levels what mathematics teaches you and so that's the most kind of pure problem solving discipline and if you have those skills then 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 you can do anything um the software like quantum startup companies they they want um they want designers they want programmers it's very helpful if they are fluent in 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 the language of quantum physics and quantum computing because they have to at the moment really directly interface with the engineers uh, the hope would be in the future that we would see a more specialization so that we can really kind of scale up the technology so at a software company today like microsoft for example um, you know the the website designer doesn't talk to the machine learning engineer on a daily basis whereas at a quantum startup you might have these people talking talking together and so it helps to have a, a common language and that that just comes from you know reading reading about blogs uh, in quantum computing and and um, watching YouTube videos, you just kind of kind of be conversant in the in the language. What's the most exciting aspect of quantum for you today? I think that it's the technology that will really drive the next scientific revolution. So we currently the way in which most sciences work, especially physical sciences, is we we start with our an understanding of some smallest unit like we we really understand atoms and that allows us to build up all you know all of the technology around us is built on sort of material physics and that comes from understanding atoms and how those are you know those go together and fit fit together but once we have quantum computers we won't be able to do that anymore because uh when we, we can't describe all of the working parts of the quantum computer. If we could do that, then there'd be no, no need to build the quantum computer. So the quantum computer is, is, will be like a black box that you can't look inside. And inside that box will be like a, an entirely new state of matter that we've created that doesn't exist anywhere in the universe. And studying that will certainly bring in new insights and, and possibly you know, a paradigm shift in, in science and technology. You mentioned cross-disciplinary -dis conversations at quantum startups. Tell us about one of your other passions, writing STEM books for children, and which of those might help quantum en engineers communicate with their peers? Um, sure, yeah. So quantum computing for babies <laughs> is, uh, is a good start if you want to, if you want to talk to quantum engineers. Um, yeah, there's a whole range of, 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 of baby books in the in this baby university series. And uh, yeah, it, that's a it's a good way to think about it. it. It's a start in in developing this language and fluency in in scientific topics, including quantum technology. Dr. Chris Ferry, Associate Professor at the Center for Quantum Software and Information at the University of Technology, Sydney and author of one of the most engaging and extensive collection of STEM books for young children of all ages that you'll ever find. Thanks again for your time, Chris. If somebody wants to connect with you personally, or maybe they want to find out about your, uh, your STEM books uh, for babies and children, how can they do that? Oh, you can start with my, my website, which is csferrie.com. And you can connect with me there and find out more about how, where and how to get the books. Sounds good. Thanks for your time, Chris. Thank you. And find more of my interviews right here on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify, or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.